How's it going guys? Just wanted to make a quick video talking about a few things about programming that I think are sort of overlooked or not understood well. And these are a little tricky to get right. When you're a new coder, when you're just learning how to program and you're getting into stuff, one of the things that you tend to think, I'm getting this because I thought this, you think that people that like are not afraid of putting themselves out there and doing YouTube and making videos about coding, you think that they're really good coders. And the truth is they're not. If you go look at my earliest videos and then my latest, you'll see that I've improved a lot. But that doesn't mean I know everything or have all the answers or I, I know why one language is better than the other or anything like that. Like you can Google that stuff and that's probably where I'm getting most of my answers from. Like I get asked things on, especially when I'm like live streaming coding, I get asked questions like, what do you think of Rust? Or what do you think of this? Or what do you think of that? I feel like I'm obligated to come up with something, but like not, almost 90% of the time or more, the answer is, I don't know. Why would you think I know? I, I don't have the answer to everything. I guess that's the point. And, and you shouldn't expect just because that, uh, you know, people make videos about things that are doing that they have answers to everything. I, I don't understand why people want my opinion on Rust. I've used Rust for about a total of 15 minutes to just learn the syntax and some of the basics of how it works. Uh, just to, you know, so that when I look over code, I can generally tell what it's doing. That's my experience with Rust. I don't know anything else about Rust. Literally 15 minutes. That's all I've spent with Rust and people are asking me my opinion about it. I, I don't care. Why would I care about Rust? I don't use it. I don't have a need for it. Uh, if I ever need it, I'll dive into it more. Same thing with C Sharp. All right. Same thing with every other language. I specifically use C++. I, I, I really don't care too much about other languages. And it's not that I don't like them. Uh, I have nothing against other people who use them. If you want to use Python, go for it. If you can get your work done with Python, cool. All right. But does that mean that everybody should switch to Python or that you need to make comparisons for days and days about why or it's better than this or that? You can find those answers pretty quickly with just doing some Google searches and, you know, understanding some of like maybe how the language is built and stuff. You don't really need to go that far into that stuff. You basically just need to pick one to specialize so that you can do what you actually want to do. Well, what it comes down to is... Well, and we all have our own stories, granted, but for me, the entire reason I wanted to learn how to program was so that I could design and create my own stuff. I'm a creative person. I've always been that way. I, I just love writing stuff and coming up with stuff and making original things, and that's why I became a programmer, because I wanted to create things, not because I wanted to analyze languages or figure out which one was most efficient or whatever. I just kind of got hooked on C++ because I liked what it could do and I liked how versatile it was and I didn't really see a need to switch to any other ones because, well, it seemed like the other ones could do it too, but I, I just didn't feel like learning a new one basically because I was already starting to get used to this one. So in order to be creative, I just kind of stuck with what I already knew and I don't, I don't really have an opinion about other languages. Well, there's this interesting thing where, um, and I've been through this phase. It's usually when you're learning the syntax. At some point, you just want to write code. You don't even care what you're writing. You just kind of want to get practice. and You just want to program. You get in this mindset where you just love program. What are you doing with the programming? You can practice all day. You can go practice algorithms. You can go to like leak code and stuff just to write code. But at some point that gets really boring because you don't really have a goal. That's been my experience at least. So what it ends up happening is you need some sort of project to work on and it almost doesn't matter what the project is. It just has to be something you're actually interested in. And it becomes not about writing the code, but about solving problems to accomplish what you want to accomplish. So programming is more about problem solving than anything else. And I would say that, uh, that's the big reason that this is not for everyone. Some people aren't very good at logically solving things. I've just always had the mindset where I like to walk through things and build up to solving problems. And I think that's why I uh, tend to like programming in general is because I think it's a fun way to solve problems. I like reasoning through the code and understanding what it's doing. I think that's always just been something that's been fun to me. Some people think that coders make a lot of money, and you can, but there's a lot of programmers and coders 
that don't make any money because it's not always easy to monetize. I don't know if you've ever heard the the term ceiling and floor. I'm kind of thinking Magic the Gathering. You, like if you look at a new Magic card, for example, and Magic's a game that programmers often like because they're essentially little programmed cards or execution of something, sort of like a function. Uh, you often think ceiling and floor like uh, the ceiling is what's the best it can do and the floor is what's the worst it can do and sometimes if you look at a card and you say well sometimes this card does absolutely nothing it's just like a useless card that's the floor that's pretty bad and that, in the best case scenario what does it do and this is sort of like it's kind of like that with with making making bank or making pay with coding too the floor is still nothing you can be a really good coder, but not have any job or not make any software that actually sells. You can still, you know, you can be the best coder in the world and make no money. So there's still a business aspect to it. You, you need to uh, either get a job where you can put your coding skills to use for a company, uh, which can be a little tricky, especially uh, that's a whole nother subject. I, I would say overall, if you're trying really hard to get a job, you'll probably get one pretty quickly because Employers tend to like people that are highly motivated and ready to go. And if you show that, they'll hire you. But if you're kind of lazy and you're just like always waiting for orders, employers tend not to like that because they feel like they're wasting their money. Like they just find themselves asking themselves like, why did they even hire this person? He doesn't get anything done. I don't, it doesn't matter how good you are if you don't actually get things done. So that's kind of the thing for making pay. You can you can be a really good coder, but the floor is still zero if you don't actually knock stuff out and uh, monetize it somehow. And maybe that needs its own little video. I'm, there are a lot out there about how to monetize coding, and there you can come up with them if you just like ask yourself the question and write down a list. You'll have beat every video about the subject because they're all very obvious. It's like make apps, make videos, make tutorials, you know, it's stuff like that. It's it's all very obvious stuff for the most part. There might be some like really creative ways to go about it too, you know, There, but for the most part, it's just making content or getting a job where you're making a content for someone else. And sometimes that content is uh, working on some behind the scenes code for a company where no one really ever sees your code except the other employees there. It's still, in a way, content. Uh, I guess I should just say that the ceiling for programming is really, really high. I think that's what people mean. Like, if you make something that ten ends up doing really well, you can make millions of dollars, sure. But it's, it's not always easy and it requires some luck because, okay, uh, here's the thing that I think is really interesting. Almost every piece of software is exactly the same. Take a step back. I know they're all designed differently, use different technologies, you do, use different stacks, but they all literally do the same thing. It's crazy when you think about it. So uh, one day my uh, brother was visiting and he was asking me about software. We were kind of talking about program he was asking me some questions about things i would mention an app and he would say what does that do and i found found myself answering that question with the exact same answer no matter what the app was it's like okay what does twitter do allows people to uh send messages and upload video and um stuff like like that what does instagram do same thing what does uh, YouTube do? Same thing. What does Facebook do? Same thing. It's like, wait, are there any apps that do anything other than that that are successful? No, pretty much no. All apps do that. It's like media. You can upload media. You can connect with people. That's what every successful app does. It kind of blows my mind after a while. It's like, all right, what about Snapchat? What's the big deal with Snapchat? Same thing. Uh, oh, okay. All right, what about TikTok? What, what's the deal with TikTok? Same thing. Exact same thing. Why do we even need all these apps? You literally only need one to just do these things and that's it. Yeah, you, you name an app, dive into what it actually does a little bit. Forget the code stack, forget about how it does it. Just look at the end result and you'll see that they're basically all the same. Where does that leave you? <laughs> so, so for me to just make another app that lets you upload media and talk to people yet again. It just feels like a useless app because that's what everything already does. Now, uh, you might be saying, well, what about, you know, there, there's other stuff. There's like trading apps and stuff like that too. But any, you know, all social media apps essentially do the same thing. They just make like one little niche, like, oh, we don't save your data, it deletes. And the other ones are like, we save everything. You know, I don't know, pick your poison. 
Um, geez, that's a weird topic. All right, well, that's it for this video. Let me know if you have questions, and I'll, I'll do a part two of, of uh, things that coders probably don't know that are actually pretty obvious or whatever I'm going to end up titling this video. Hope you enjoyed this entertaining video, or my attempt at making an entertaining video, rather. That's always a weird thing, too. I never know if a video is actually going to do well until I put it out. Sometimes I think, oh, this is a great idea. I'll make the video, just get a million views. It gets like 10 views. And then I'll make another one where it's just like, oh, this is the dumbest video ever. I guess I'll just upload it, and it does really well. You just never know. That's that's another thing about these type of processes is uh, you, you have no idea if it's going to actually resonate with people. So let me know by smashing and hitting buttons and stuff. And if you want to go further, there are links down below. Just support me. Thanks, guys. Peace.